I'd like to start out, though, with what's going on in Congress right now. In about two hours, in about two hours, we are going to, uh, in all probability, I mean, who, who knows? This is when it's, the vote is scheduled at, at uh, 2 o'clock Eastern time today uh, for the House of Representatives to vote on a one-plus trillion dollar appropriation bill to keep the government from shutting down tonight. And there's a story, and then there's a larger story. And the larger story is not at all being told in the corporate media in the United States. And the, the, the smaller story is, you know, driving the news cycle to a certain extent. But the bigger story behind that, nobody's talking about. And that's what I want to talk about today. So let me start with the small story, the one that all the media is talking about. This piece of legislation, I just got an email from Senator Sanders, you know, from his, I mean, I'm, I subscribe to his newsletter, right? So it's, uh, it's I, you, you probably got one too if you've been over to sanders.senate.gov and signed up for his newsletter. And he says, uh, to, the Senate today advanced a Department of Defense bill that would authorize $560 billion for the military. The vote was 85 to 14. Sanders voted no. He said, at a time when our national debt is more than $18 trillion and we spend nearly as much on defense as the rest of the world combined, the time is long overdue to end the waste and financial mismanagement that have plagued the Pentagon for years. Okay, so that, That's the defense appropriation bill in the Senate. Now, over in the House, this so-called Cromnibus bill, this thing has a bunch of uh, little sweetheart provisions in it, which is the larger story, how they got there, which I, I will get to in just a second. With, for example, and I'm, uh, this is from the District Sentinel. This is a, by the way, the District Sentinel is a new news site on the interwebs and uh, certainly worth bookmarking. Uh, Sam Sachs is one of, the, one of the guys who helped put this thing together. Sam was my, uh, uh, he was a producer for our TV show for several years. Good guy I've worked with for years. And uh, in fact, he, he, he worked as an editor on uh, the, the crash of 2016. Sam knows his way around this town. So here's a piece. I'm not sure if Sam wrote this or, or uh, uh, somebody else over at district districtsentinel.com, as in the District of Columbia, the Sentinel, you know, as in the watcher, districtsentinel.com. But the, uh, the headline is, Surprise Right-Wing Aggressive Fantasies Undermine Budget Talks. Page 1599 of the 1,603-page bill uh, guts the rules of McCain-Feingold. It'll, it'll increase tenfold the amount of money that billionaires, and keep, this is purely for billionaires. I mean, anybody who's going to write a check for $230,000 is probably not even a millionaire. They might be a multimillionaire, like they might be worth hundreds of millions, but they're probably not worth a million or maybe even 10 million, because that's still a hell of a lot of money. But for somebody who's a billionaire, that's chump change. This is like you know the stuff that the, that you find in the in the uh, under the in, in the couch between the cushions, you know, for these guys. Barnett Naylor of Public Citizen points out there's another change. Now that's a McCain-Feingold change. Then there is a Dodd Frank change, and that's changing what's called margin requirements. Uh, as Elizabeth Warren said, this was negotiated behind closed doors, literally written by Citigroup lobbyists. In fact, here's Elizabeth Warren describing one of the provisions in this bill. Again, this is the smaller story. Here's Elizabeth Warren. Wrong one. That's the wrong one, too. There we After go. the financial crash, we said to these big financial institutions, you've got to take the riskiest part of your trading, separate it out, so that if it explodes, when it explodes, it's not going to take down the insured part of the business, the deposits that are insured by FDIC insurance. And that provision has been in Dodd-Frank all along. Everybody has adjusted to it. But what happens now in the spending bill is they just repeal that provision, which mm. means that the taxpayers ultimately will be on the hook if they get out there, engage in derivatives trading, and it blows up the entire financial institution or the entire economy. Right, right. So, you know, here's the net net. 
if the legislators had written this for you and me, because as I said, this was, according to Senator Warren, this was literally written by a city group lobbyist. And it's in a piece of legislation that John Boehner is going to bring to the floor of the House today for a vote. Presumably it'll still be there. Now, Nancy Pelosi has said, Mr. Boehner, please remove that. We'll see. But this is, you know, one of those moments when it's entirely appropriate to call 202-225-3121. Or you can go to, uh, uh, on the web, callcongress.org, and there's some toll-free numbers as well as that phone number I just gave you. The white, the uh, congressional switchboard line here in Washington, D.C. that gets you to an operator. And then you just say, I'd like to talk to, you know, fill in the blank. Who's your who's your member of the House of Representatives? Who are your two, your two senators? There's three people here in Washington, D.C., in all probability that you can call and say, no. Are you, are you kidding? You want to give the banks, the banksters, another opportunity to gamble? I mean, the, the metaphor that's being made and the, the, or the analogy that's being made and was made by Elizabeth Warren. By the way, that clip was from Rachel Maddow's show last night on MSNBC. Uh, the, the analogy that has been made is that, uh, that the banks, with their gambling and investments, are gambling. I mean, quite literally, you're betting that this is going to go up. You're hoping it doesn't go down. That the banks with their gambling are sort of like you and me going to Las Vegas. But the fact of the matter is that, you know, before before the Reagan revolution, a lot of people in this country had pensions. And by the way, there's also a piece in this bill that that allows employers to cut back pensions to people who have already retired. Are you living on a pension? John Boehner wants to wants the company that is writing the checks for your pension to be able to cut the amount that you get. That's in this bill, too. Might be a good idea to call your members of Congress and say, hell no. Or you know, actually do it a little more respectfully than that. But here's the big picture, right? Here's the big story behind all this. How did this stuff get in here? Alex L. Ellefson writing over on Alternet. The headline, sweet deal. Corporations get $760 from the government for every dollar they spend on elections. This is a report that was issued last month by the Sunlight Foundation. It says that for every dollar the nation's most politically active companies spent on political influence, they receive $760 from the government in the form of federal business and support. 200 of the country's top campaign donors spent $5.8 billion between 2007 and 2012 and received a whopping $4.4 trillion in return. Seriously. 29 companies received a thousand times more money than they spent on contributions and lobbying. 102 companies received 10 times more money than they spent. And 138 companies saw a financial return that was greater than their investment. The biggest beneficiaries, banks. Second, weapons manufacturers like Lockheed Martin, which spent $8.4 million in contributions, $84 million in lobbying, and got $332 billion in federal business and support. Of the, and so that's the real story, is that the Supreme Court with Citizens United has allowed these big corporations to buy our legislators. They're doing that, and the legislators then are just selling us all out. It, this, is, this is anti-democratic, anti-republican. This is the Tom Hartman Program. With a small d and a small r. These, these, these are violations of the founding principles of our republic. 